Hey guys, welcome to IndieLoop.com, your social loop for all things independent. Today we got a special episode for you. We're going to talk to a good friend of mine, James Burns, who has a film out in theaters about his life. It's called Jamesy Boy. We're going to find out what inspired this film and what he's doing next. And we're also going to talk to one of his good friends who is helping him with his latest project, Revolving Doors. So come follow me, guys. Let's go talk to him. James already has convictions for robbery, vandalism, and assault. He's been institutionalized three times in eight years, once for threatening your boyfriend with a knife. You spend 20 minutes with this file. Suddenly you're an expert on my son. I ended up getting locked up when I was 13, and I was, I was locked up in New Jersey. And when I came home, that's where Jamesy Boy uh, picks up and I got mixed up with the wrong crowd. I ended up getting charged as an adult. I was sentenced to 12 years. I did just shy of five years on that. Came home when I was about 19, going on 20. You know, it was really difficult for me to readjust um, again and, and find my place in the world. On this film, got some pretty big names. James Woods, Bing Rames, Mary Lou's Parker, just to name a couple. What was that like to have them? to, you know, star in your film. Work, working with them and, and sharing my story with them was, was uh, you know, it's an honor. They didn't have to do this this film. Um, you know, we, we had a smaller budget, but I think that they read the screenplay and they really believed in the project, and that's, that's why they did that. A lot of people out there would like to know, and I understand this question, why you? What makes your story so inspiring the fact where they want to write a film about it. The only difference between me and so many other kids um, out there is, is the fact that I, I had an opportunity to be heard. My story isn't necessarily unique in a way. I mean, it's in a lot of ways, it, there's so many kids out there who are going through the same struggle. But that's the point of the, the film as well, you know, because these people don't have a voice. Right. They're lost in the system. They're like ghosts in the system. Other people being able to relate to this story and, and being able to draw inspiration from that, I think that's the greatest thing that uh, came about this film. Really amazing relationships have been forged. You know, Trevor White, again, is he's like my big brother. He's my mentor. Also, Michael Trotter. I'm grateful for him to be a part of my life and, and be able to help me uh, share my story. You know, I wouldn't have met Robbie Merrill's, I don't think if, you know, this, this movie came about, and you know, Robbie's been, um, you know, a crucial part of, of uh, you know, what, what I've been doing and, and, and like a creative force in my life. My cousin's now fiance is friendly with the director and producer of Jamesy Boy. And knowing that I was studying film, invited me, it told, basically told me that I would get the opportunity to go on a real featured set and shadow a director and a producer. And to me, you know, never actually having worked on the set before, that just really blew my mind. And really the person who I knew right away that I wanted to talk to the most was this guy. And not only was I, you know, excited just to be on set and to experience all of it, but I knew that I had made a real friend. And about a week after, after Jamesy Boy was wrapped, he gave me a call and said, listen, I had a great time with you on set. I want you to produce my next short film. It's been 15 years since I've been in trouble and I'm actually charged with the same exact charges that I had 15 years ago. And uh, I can't believe, you know, at 40 years old, here it is, I'm going back to jail again. Revolving Doors is basically about three different guys who are in different phases of the justice system. Um, you know, all, all three of them, you know, as the film unfolds, you'll see the cycle complete itself. It's about, you know, community, it's about um, fatherhood, it's about, you know, it's, a, it's about a lot of different things. We wanted to tell these people's individual stories, and we wanted the viewer to be able to connect with them one-on-one. -on -one. So what we really wanted to do was delve into these guys' lives and have the viewer really connect with these people, not as, you know, ex-felons or Baltimore residents or whoever, but as people. It's very raw, 
Uh, it's very um, emotional. It's most of all, it's it's not a not a message film. It's about taking responsibility. It's about being an individual rather than a label as an ex-convert or, or an ex-felon. It's about being a about being a person, and that's what we really want from this film. We want individuals to be able to connect with other individuals and not just say, oh, he's an ex-convict, he's never going to do anything uh, good with his life, he's never going to change, because that's not how, that's not the way the world is. Change is good. Uncomfortable is good. you got to learn to love uncomfortable because uncomfortable creates change. When I was locked up, I learned that, you know, not everybody's going to see things from my perspective. Not everybody's going to forgive you. Not everybody's going to think that you're this guy who, you know, went through a lot and, and changed. And I understand that completely. But you can't let that hold you back.